Judging from the title of this video, you're probably thinking, Oh my gosh, Raven, how'd you do that? What happened? Are you in any pain? Are you alright? To which I say, I'm fine, people. I'm not in any pain anymore, and the problem has been completely taken care of. And now I want to talk about it. I'm going to kick off this video with a pretty embarrassing confession. I've had really bad oral hygiene habits since I was in, like, fifth grade. It started with me deciding to skip brushing my teeth just for one night, and it quickly snowballed out of control from there. For years, I just brushed my teeth when my mouth started looking or feeling a bit gross, i.e. every, like, three to five days on average. Routine dental visits gradually got more and more expensive because I needed fillings, and now this. I wasn't doing anything crazy when I broke my molar. It's not like I was trying to do parkour or getting into fistfights or doing anything violent like that. I actually broke my molar while I was eating pancakes. My dentist told me later on that it was likely that my tooth was already broken at that time, and the pancakes just had the right consistency to lift the loose piece of tooth away. And boom, broken molar. And thus began my year and a half long struggle with dealing with a broken tooth. Mm hmm, that's right. I left a broken tooth sitting in my mouth untreated for a year and a half. Obviously, when this happened, I realized it wasn't a good situation to be in, and that it would be better if I got it looked at ASAP. The thing is, though, I had developed a strong, irrational fear of going to the dentist. All those memories of needles and drills and expensive dental bills just made me want to never go to the dentist again. I wasn't in any pain at the time that the tooth broke, so of course I was like, it's fine, I don't need to go to the dentist. While I wasn't in any pain, the break was still pretty bad. Basically, a quarter of the tooth was just gone leaving behind a sharp point on the corner of it that would poke and scrape at my tongue whenever it moved in my mouth. It would also poke at an area of my gums, making me not completely close my mouth for over a year, and even then, I still didn't go to the dentist. I eventually got used to it, probably developed some calluses under my tongue, and I managed to live in relative peace with this broken molar just chilling at the back of my mouth. That is, until around November of last year. I was just sitting at home eating some steak when I guess I bit down on the piece that I was chewing in just the right way that a surge of pain shot through my broken molar. Anyone that's dealt with any sort of tooth pain before knows that it's absolutely unbearable. This, though... This was easily the worst physical pain I've ever felt in my entire freaking life. I spat out the piece of steak, which is absolutely unheard of for me, curled up into a ball as I lifted any sort of pressure away from that aching tooth, and cried. Nobody was around when this happened, and it was like 10 o'clock at night, so dentist wasn't an option. I managed to get myself to my bathroom, took some ibuprofen, and after around 15 more minutes of suffering, the pain finally stopped. From that point on, though, I couldn't chew anything with the right side of my mouth, because it would aggravate the monster that this molar was becoming. Did I go to the dentist? Nope. I was just holding on to the hope that the tooth would eventually die and fall out on its own. Of course, this was all back in November, when the over-the-counter remedies still worked. For several months, I was in this endless cycle of being fine for a couple of weeks, then being in pain, then taking about three ibuprofen tablets, and then being fine again. I also used oral gel and super minty mouthwash like Listerine to combat the pain. And along with routine toothbrushing, it just worked out for me. But then, as you probably might have guessed, all of my over-the-counter remedies stopped working, 
minty mouthwash, ibuprofen, oral gel. Nothing was working anymore. I was in so much pain at one point that I could barely eat and couldn't sleep. No amount of ice packs and estaminophen could save me from my suffering. And I was going crazy. And that's when I knew it was time. You know what? No, I'll admit it. It was past time. I should have gotten it taken care of back when I first broke the tooth. Oh well, live and learn the hard way, I guess. I finally caved and called the dentist to schedule an emergency appointment. The only problem was that they couldn't get me in until the following Tuesday. And I called them on a Wednesday. Now, I'm not a medical professional or anything, so I wouldn't know anything about this. But when someone says that they're in severe pain and need an emergency appointment, that should not translate to, lol, can you see me in like a week? No! I'm in severe pain now! And would like to be seen now? But... I'm way too nice to be a Karen like that, so I agreed to the appointment, booked it, and then immediately called a different dentist to see if I could be seen sooner. The second dentist that I called just so happened to be the same one that my family has been going to since I was a kid. Dr. K. Now, don't get me wrong, Dr. K is amazing at what he does. He has the hands of a freaking god. And he's so nice, and he lets me have laughing gas when I come in because he knows I get nervous if I need anything more than a cleaning. But again, bad memories. Fear of dentist. Sorry, Dr. K. Dr. K's office also tried getting me booked for the following Tuesday, and I was like, um, if I could be seen sooner than that, I'd, I, I'd like that. And you want to know what the lady over the phone said? Well, we can book you for 2 50 tomorrow. Does that sound good? Why didn't you say that from the get-go, lady? If you could book me in the next day after I specifically told you that I was in severe pain and needed an emergency appointment... Why would you offer me an appointment a full week out when getting me in the next day was an option? Why? I booked the next day appointment. Good thing, too, because the same afternoon that I made that phone call, I developed an infection around my broken molar and had a ton of swelling, and I don't know how well that would have turned out for me if I had waited longer. The next day comes with very little to eat and sleep, and because we're in the middle of a pandemic right now, I had to answer some questions and have my temperature taken at the door. I didn't have the COVID, I just had an infection that was wreaking havoc on my mouth, and I had a slight temperature. I blame myself for sitting in a car parked in the sun for five minutes, but, you know, they did it as a precaution. Dr. K comes in and takes a peek at my mouth. He looks at it with one of those mirrors on a stick and scrapes at it with one of those little hooks. And despite all the pain I was in, Dr. K didn't cause a single ounce of it. He's got the hands of Jesus, I swear. They did wind up taking an x-ray and discovered that the tooth was pretty much dead. And I basically had two options, extraction or root canal. Now... I can't emphasize this enough. I was 1,000% done with this tooth. After dealing with it for a year and a half, I had no qualms about having needles shoved into my gums and having this tooth ripped out. But I had an infection. In case you don't know, trying to put someone with an infection under any sort of anesthesia runs the risk of the anesthetic not working properly. And, as Dr. K put it, when you're getting a tooth pulled, you really want that anesthetic to work. And so, I was prescribed some antibiotics to deal with the infection, and was sent home. Which, fair enough. D-Day for this broken molar was supposed to be on July 6th, 
but I had around five days left until my other appointment with the first dentist that I called, which I never canceled. I'd basically just accepted my fate. Despite having the extraction scheduled with Dr. K, I still decided to go see the first dentist that I called. Dr. M. A second opinion never hurts, and I wanted to see if he could get the tooth out sooner, because it was driving me absolutely insane. That fateful Tuesday morning, I drove to Dr. M's office, filled out some paperwork, and got settled into a chair. By this point, the infection was pretty much gone, and I was in a lot less pain. They take some x-rays, and Dr. M basically came to the same conclusion as Dr. K. My only options were either get a root canal or have the tooth extracted. Again, 1000% done with this tooth. I wanted it gone. I want the extraction. The only thing, though, is that I didn't expect them to decide to pull the tooth the very same day. I expected them to be like Dr. K's office and schedule it, like, three weeks out. So, we're gonna set you up and get that tooth out of there today. Does that sound good? Uh, okay. So, they break out the needle, which immediately puts me off, because I'm used to being numbed up with oral gel and being put under laughing gas first. Then we can talk about needles. I ask Dr. M about it, and he's like, oh, don't worry, I'm so good at this, you'll hardly even feel it. Okay! Note, this is my first time even seeing this dentist, so I don't know what he's like, I don't know if he's as good as he says. This is like the ultimate trust fall. I just had to trust that Dr. M was right, and that he wouldn't hurt me. And my god, he was actually right. I barely even felt the needle, and I'm normally not scared of shots regardless, but usually it's a lot worse than how Dr. M did it. A few minutes later, the right side of my lower jaw goes completely numb, and they lay me back to begin the extraction. Again, no laughing gas, no sedation, Nothing but a numbed-up mouth. Then again, I did have to drive myself home, so it's probably a good thing I wasn't sedated. For the most part, getting my tooth pulled was relatively painless. I might have freaked out a little bit during the process. I think it was because my brain couldn't tell if the pressure I was feeling was actually pain, or it was anticipating pain rather than pressure. I don't know. All I do know was... Crack, crack, pop, and it was done. Whatever pain I did feel was probably like a two or a three at most, while the pain that the tooth had been causing me was between an eight and a ten. After that, I was given some gauze to bite on, got a recovery care sheet, paid for the operation, and went home. I did consider asking Dr. M if I could take my tooth home as a souvenir, because I'm just weird like that, but seeing it lay there in the metal tray beside me, covered in blood and nastiness, I just mentally gave it the middle finger and left, and then slept for like six hours after I got home because I was tired. Recovery was a breeze. I've had my wisdom teeth removed, so the same rules basically applied. No drinking through straws, no drinking alcohol, limit the smoking, and stick to soft foods for a couple of days. I ate a lot of ice cream and SpaghettiOs. In terms of pain during recovery, there was hardly any. At most, it was like a one. Ibuprofen was more than enough to keep me comfortable, and I'm a pretty fast healer, so I had that going for me. I never had to rinse with salt water. The most I did was rinse with regular water to lift away any food that tried to cling to the socket. Do I regret going with the extraction rather than a root canal? Nah. This is the first time in like a year and a half that I've been able to live life normally and not have to tiptoe around this stupid tooth. I forgot what that was like. And it's nice. 
I would say that since I've gotten my broken molar extracted, my oral hygiene habits have improved significantly. I brush twice a day, rinse with mouthwash once a day, and floss every night. That isn't to say that there aren't probably some minor problems with some of my teeth that need to be taken care of, but at least I can eat and sleep without waking up every hour or two because I'm in pain. The moral of the story here is just take care of yourself the way you're supposed to. If you have a habit of not brushing your teeth like I did, it will catch up to you either in the form of cavities or worse, like I had it. And if you think you can wait it out until the tooth falls out, chances are you're wrong. That's all I have for this video, you guys. Thank you for watching. If you're experiencing some sort of tooth pain right now, here are some of the things that helped me for a while. Over-the-counter pain relief. My poison of choice is aspirin or ibuprofen. Oral anesthetic, like oral gel tastes gross, but it works. Anything that is minty, toothpaste, mouthwash, gum, actual mints, etc. I was surprised this actually worked, but it works. Avoid food or drinks that cause flare-ups. Mine was, not surprisingly, chocolate and soda. Heat or ice packs help with swelling. If one doesn't work, chances are the other one will and schedule a dentist appointment as soon as possible. They know what they're doing. They know how to help you. Your own health should take priority over your pride and ego. Don't be me. My name is Blue Raven 666 and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.